and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. We're here today to talk about academic innovation, which is a small but I hope mighty group in uh, the Raymond A. Mason School of Business. So I am Karen Connor. I have my MBA from James Madison University and my PhD in Educational Policy Planning and Leadership from William & Mary. I've been at the university for 16 years. I've had the privilege of working with Terry Trojak during most of that time, even when we weren't exactly in the same organizational part of the university, we still shared offices. So we've been together for quite a while. Quite a while, yes. I've uh, I've been here for over 25 years at the university and mostly at the Mason School of Business, but I also have hopped over to Wayne Mary IT for a portion of that. And one constant throughout this um, is during the, the whole dawn of the internet and everything, um, there's always been this intersection between technology and providing academic solutions. So we hope to draw more on that as we do our presentation. And, and I wanna emphasize that as we talk today, I really wanna make this informal and casual, um, interactive. I'd love for people to interject and ask us questions. And uh, as, we, as we basically provide a story and tell you what we've been doing. Um, so first I wanted to kick off by just asking people if they could put it in chat, what do you think we do? <laughs> what is your perception of what our office provides as a service to you? Um, I'm just really curious uh, because a lot of times we only provide, maybe you only think of us in one particular role. So it would be nice to see in chat um, what so the different things. Elizabeth says everything under the sun. That's quite <laughs> generous. Morgan says video support. Ken White says produce videos. Carlene says help with everything about IT smiley face. Video support, excellent faculty support. I've been told process improvement, Brian says. So we've got a variety of answers here. A good gamut. And and I sort of wanted to lay out the, the groundwork as we talk here that we definitely don't perform the same duties from one year to the next. So when people ask us out and about, well, what is it you do? It's not always an easy question to answer and it's definitely not a quick answer. So hopefully we can provide more insight as we go on. Um, we do have some uh, areas that, that we wanna cover. Um, a lot of what we do is, is fac faculty sided, faculty focused. Um, and so we will dig into these topics. So first I wanted to speak about some of the, the tools that we work with, with faculty. Um, we try to always strive to enhance the student learning experience. And so first we will partner with individual instructors and find out what is it that uh, their desires, their goals are, and we work with them to decide what a plan of action would be and to enact that. And so we've worked very closely with them on a variety of tools such as Blackboard. And we try to focus on software that the campus has officially licensed, um, items that have already been purchased that students don't require an additional login for, um, and is supported officially by Wayne Mary IT. And I, I can tell you in the past year that uh, remote teaching has definitely been a challenge. Um, it's been a challenge in the sense that we had a scale issue where everyone at one time needed assistance. And also during a time of high anxiety, it was very important for us to try to keep things as simple as possible, both from the instructor point of view and from the student. Um, Karen, do you have more thoughts on that? Yeah, I just wanted to bring everyone's attention to the lower right corner, which is a screenshot of our Mason Instructional Continuity site, which was something that came out of our FAST meetings, the Faculty at Speed Team meetings that were formed last summer. And I know that 
some of you on this call helped with that uh, those meetings and helped us to curate this information that we put uh, on Blackboard. If you were part of that, please go ahead and enter in the chat that you helped us out with that because it is important for us to recognize that most of what we do, we don't do by ourselves. We do in collaboration with others. And it's only through your support and help that we're able to accomplish all the things that we have been able to accomplish. So um, I just wanted to bring to your attention that this this tool is something that will live well beyond COVID, hopefully, because it really has a, a lot of information about how to use our technology, both uh, from a technical and a pedagogical perspective. Absolutely. And, you know, not all activities are the same. We try to, to do a, a variety of different projects with our faculty members. Um, when we consult with them, we try to figure out their learning goals and we try to, to the best of our ability and with the expertise of others that we partner with, we try to see their vision through. And here are just a, a couple of examples of some non-traditional things that we've been a part of. And Karen, I know you want to discuss a little bit more about the e-learning community and the Avaya Live Engage. Yes, first I have a question for everyone. Who knows which professor used a virtual learning environment, the Avaya Live Engage, and taught in a virtual classroom using avatars? Who knows which professor that was? <laughs> Rex, that's correct. Rex is always one of those out there. T-Rex, yeah. <laughs> He's out there. He's wanting to do some new things and we're always uh, up for helping him explore um, new technologies. And this uh, was actually something that was part of a CCE class and uh, it went very well. And I have to do a shout out to Martha. I'm not sure if she's on the call, but I know that she was part of helping to develop that virtual environment Absolutely. and made it really look like Miller Hall and William and Mary. So kudos to her <laughs> for that. Uh, you mentioned the e-learning community. That's something that we started um, uh, a while back and it involved um, entities from across campus and it really was something that had evolved, but it, um, it helped us to kickstart some projects that uh, we were involved with later on. Uh, since the e-learning community has sort of disbanded, that actually was passed on to the e-learning group that was later um, evolved into the Studio for Teaching and Learning Innovation. So again, a lot of times Terry and I are involved in things in the beginning, the new ideas and they're kind of born and then we pass them off to other people and they take care of the care and feeding of, of the project um, for a later time. So there were two um, specific events that we wanted to give a little bit more detail about. Um, the first being the uh, Teaching and Learning Expo. Um, Karen, did you want to take this? Sure. Um, so this is something that I'm really proud of. I don't know how many of you were able to attend one of our expos. We had three um, in uh, the course of three years. We had three annual uh, teaching and technology expos, and we collaborated with people from IT, uh, the School of Education, the library, the people who are now part of um, the Studio for Teaching and Learning Innovation, which didn't exist at that time. And these are just some pictures from um, that special project. But I have a question for our audience. Can you tell me what the long yellow item is in the lower left-hand corner? In the middle, we have a robot that was brought and provided to us by a professor over in the School of Education. Upper left corner is a screenshot of uh, the Twitter feed that came out of the um, expo, we were having our attendees tweet. I'm still looking for uh, who knows what the long yellow thing is <laughs> over in the, long, in the lower left hand corner. Uh, nobody's taking a guess. The best espresso maker ever, mm, possibly. 
Allie, yes. Um, and uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Allie uh, says it's a submarine. Yes, it's the little yellow submarine from <laughs> Vims. And uh, they were kind enough to bring that over. They used that in their research and they shared uh, that at our expo. Uh, on the right is just a, a diagram of kind of the the backstory of what some of the planning that goes on for the expo. We actually um, spaced out tables in the Brinkley. And for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the expo, those, at each table we had, we tried to have two people. One who was a faculty member who had used a particular technology in teaching. And we paired them with a person who was either from IT or who was very familiar with that technology who might be able to answer the more technical questions. And so faculty and staff would come and they would learn about these technologies and how they're being used in uh, education. And what I really liked about this event is that it just brought so many diverse um, disciplines together in one room. I think it allowed people to learn about what was going on beyond their immediate sphere. So uh, that was fun to be a part of. Um, and then the MVA Sprint Week a few years back, we had um, a pretty fun role in establishing this immersive environment where despite it being fiction, uh, we had a restaurant crisis simulation and it was basically centered around an outbreak occurring in the Midwest. And as um, the students were in charge of a company, they had to uh, figure out how to respond, especially like in a uh, PR uh, focus, how to respond in the midst of this ongoing crisis. And so um, we, ha we did a variety of videos. Uh, one, and on the left, we, uh, we had a reporter interviewing some theater students, and I'm wondering if by chance, because Carrie and I went local to film the background, would anyone happen to know which retail establishment that is that we went to? I'm just curious. But um, the theater students did an awesome job of being interviewed at this restaurant, being asked what they thought about this outbreak, and the one to the left especially, it was amazing how, especially her face became more ill, the more detail she was being told about this crisis going on. Um, and then the top left, we had an executive partner that was willing to come in. And what was unique is we had this sort of a um, cable network conversation, uh, a, a, just a discussion going back and forth with questions and answers but we had to film them independently. So we had to script it all out so that when we put it together, it looked like they were seeing each other, but in fact, they had come in at completely different times to record that. Um, we have some uh, faux social media posts on the top right, and all on the bottom, you see some made up uh, media companies uh, because we staged um, these uh press conferences where the students had to answer directly to live reporter questions and um it was really fun working with the mba program on this um so alley wins with zoe's kitchen zoe's kitchen yes <laughs> i remember it was a very cold day and windy and we also got the help of some emergency vehicles to add to this chicago ambiance so <laughs> uh and then in the center, um, we have a kitchen scene. One of our IT assistants volunteered to film um, a viral video of maybe of a angry uh, kitchen worker. And um, I'm curious to know if anyone recognizes that, uh, <laughs> where we filmed that at. Uh, but it was really fun getting uh, a lot of cooperation from people and trying to make this a really engaging experience for the students. Ken White wins with the Bully Cafe. Yes, uh, we had to we had to have a few deans pull some strings just to be able to go in that area. I'm sure there's a lot of, of rules that are over my head that I was not even aware of when we pondered this. 
Uh, but that was a that was very very fun to be a part of. To be clear, I don't think we were actually in the kitchen. We were there, right there, where you have your tray line, with the kitchen in the background. Yeah, it was. A, there was definitely some rules that we had to be careful about. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, beyond um, specifically working with the faculty, we try to uh, to help all the different programs and departments. Um, one example is uh, an executive partner project where they were creating these short focused presentations on different business topics for students. And um, we also do uh, a lot of graphic work because um, it's, it's important that sometimes the, the visual aids can help with assisting with conveying information or providing, uh, providing a message that you want to convey to students. Um, so we work with a variety of people um, beyond the faculty. And, but I think probably uh, the thing a lot of people associate us with is videos in particular. Um, Karen, I know you've got some, some stories about our light board to share. Yeah, um, the light board uh, comes to us. Uh, it was actually uh, an idea that Everspring shared with me. Everspring is our partner in our online programs. And um, so I got an email that said, Karen, take a look at this. Uh, you might be interested in your studio once you uh, once you get a bigger studio and your program grows a little bit because you really need like a 15 by 15 space. And I'm like, wait a minute, we've got a 15 by 15 space. <laughs> and so I started talking to faculty, long story short, Paul Blossom stepped up and actually made the frame for this light board. And we ordered the glass from, I think, Danny's glass. So this is is a homegrown light board that actually works pretty well. In the center, you'll recognize uh, Bill Gary. He's there to, uh, sharing some accounting tips with us. Uh, he's doing a lecture for his class. I'm curious if anyone recognizes the, um, the professor who's over to the right of Bill Gary. Do you know who that person is? This was a request that came to us from the Studio for Teaching and Learning Innovation. Could we um, share our studio and our light board with them for um, them to record with one of their professors and we gladly uh, allow them to come in and do that. I don't see any takers on who that person might be. No one recognizes Jim Comey. Yes, that was um, Jim Comey and uh, it was delightful. He was doing a course in the uh, William & Mary Washington Center and we were happy to be able to uh, collaborate with them. So we've been very blessed to have a, um, a student assistant in the past that has helped us greatly with a lot of our remote shoots. And this is the, on the left, a couple of examples of um, Julianne being out in the wild and recording in various sites. And in the center, I want to draw your attention to a farmland video, which I would love to go into great detail about this. This is one of my favorite videos we've done, but we don't have time. Uh, but at the end of this presentation, I'm going to share a link and I really implore you to go. Um, the marketing team put together a great story on this and it was super fun to do this video for Scott Swan's Flex course that talked about how a company responds to something in social media. Actually, Terry, this wasn't really, I mean, it was a story, but it wasn't fictional. It actually happened, right? No, it, yes, it actually occurred. And we try to capture um, with a lot of detail how things were unwinding in this. I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> and then on the right, we have uh, our students setting up an overhead camera where we're trying to capture Joe and his specifically his hands as he's manipulating objects on a table and we have a short clip that we would like to share with you okay this is going to be about uh two minutes uh a couple of pieces of this clip if you'll if you'll just uh 
watch with us. In this module, we are going to look at MapReduce and the key value pairs uh, programming construct. Um, this is used extensively in uh, big data applications. Uh, for this example, we're going to deconstruct these salads into their individual components and then enumerate you know, how many spinach leaves there are, how many carrots there are, so forth and so on. So to complete this analogy, uh, let's think about each of these three plates as a computer node, each one being its own computer node. And then we're going to also have an additional node known as the master node that schedules and communicates with each of these three worker nodes, if you will. Now the first step in MapReduce is the mapper, um, hence the map um, part of the name. In this case, we need to define a key value pair. Now, since we just want to enumerate all of the spinach leaves and all of the carrots, etc., in the mapper stage, we just have to give them their identification as key and values. So, for example, in this particular node, or this salad, we'll have a carrot comma one for this carrot. We'll have a snap pea comma one for this snap pea. And we're going to fast forward over here for just a bit. So with the uh, reducer stage, now we have all of the uh, ones counted and now we have them summed together. So you see all of the different ingredients um, in its own pile and now we know the counts for each of those. So in this example, uh, we have done one sequence of map reduce. Uh, we had a mapper that um, took a plate and it started giving them spinach comma ones, carrot comma ones for each individual ingredient then we had the short and shuffle stage, which is kind of the magic of MapReduce, um, that put them across all of nodes and all of the plates into um, the groups by keys. And then the reducer stage, which this is the end of the reducer stage, where now they're all counted and they're in their each individual piles. So that gives you a little idea about uh, the gymnastics that Julianne had to go through in order to make that happen. Yeah, and I think that's a great example of what we're trying to do for faculty. Um, Joe's trying to really make a complicated topic and try to make it fun and interesting for the students. So uh, that was fun working with that. Uh, let's see. So we've done some other things uh, and, you know, we don't often get a chance to directly interact with students but I can say that the few times that we have, it, it has produced some magical moments. <laughs> I think they've enjoyed the, uh, the real experiential experience of being behind a camera, being in a studio, sometimes for the first time. Karen, did you have thoughts on that? No, just that uh, I agree with Terry that those are some pretty magical moments. I think that the students are pretty intimidated when they first come into the studio with all the lights and the green screen. And but I think it's a wonderful experience for them. I think they walk out and they and they think it's really great. <laughs> and of course, it's important that uh, everyone knows we're not always um, trying to recreate the wheel. We work with a lot of valuable people around campus who are much more of an expert on certain topics than than us. Um, Karen, you've got some thoughts on, I think, the School of Ed partnership? Yes, we worked closely with uh, the School of Ed in particular. Um, we have just recently, we had a meeting with um, some folks with the Studio for Teaching, Learning, and Innovation and the library. And of course, we work closely with IT. And again, we wouldn't be able to do what we do if we didn't have these people that we collaborated with. And it's, it's a pleasure to work with them and everyone in the Mason community because every, everyone that we work with has such passion for education and wanting our students to have a great experience. And um, we've really enjoyed working with, with our partners. We're very, very fortunate to have the resources here. And um, I wanted to switch to uh, our last topic, eSports, which is a special passion project for us. And you know, we've advocated e-learning long before people even thought about online education. And we were discussing things about teaching and technology before we were lucky enough to have an entire studio for teaching and learning innovation that was established for that. And 
we feel that esports is the next big thing. Um, we are pushing hard on this because we believe that this represents something that is occurring now that might be beneath a lot of people's radar. And Karen, if you could go into detail about the, the origins of how this really got started. Yes. Um, we put forth, Terry and I actually put forth a proposal for the University Teaching and Learning Project through the Studio for Teaching and Learning Innovation. It's a project that's done, I think, annually. And um, so you make a proposal and they go through the proposals and determine which one would be uh, good. We're looking for people who are looking for innovative ways um, to uh, improve education. And Terry and I initially wanted to look at gaming, gamification, and game-based learning, more general uh, gaming areas in education and how we might be able to bring that to William & Mary and attract the next generation of students. And as we did our research, we uh, quickly realized how big esports was and uh, how interested uh, our students were. And so we actually went back to the University Teacher and Learning Project and asked them if it was okay for us to solely focus on esports rather than more generally gaming. And they said, sure. And so we did, and we collaborated with uh, folks from the School of Education, IT, Arts and Sciences. And um, so out of that came a lot of our ideas around esports and how we wanted to bring both an applied and an academic program uh, for esports to William and Mary. Our applied, uh, I'll let Terry talk about our applied in just a second, but our um, academic side is, is not quite off the ground yet. And so we're trying to work with that. Uh, but Terry, share with us a little bit about the uh, applied side and, and our um, previous year. Yeah, the students have been, I mean, to say they're excited is a complete understatement. Um, during the, the course of this past year, under pandemic, we opened the eTARC, and I'm, I'm curious if anyone knows what that acronym stands for, but it provided a place for our students to be able to play in the competitions and to practice for them. And so much has occurred just in this past year. Um, we, we launched five teams and on the top right is our Super Smash Brothers, which had an immediately successful start and went into the playoffs and uh, couldn't be more proud of, of how they represent our school well against some very tough comp competition. Um, it, yeah, I, I would love to go on. There's just, there's almost too much to say about this topic, but the I think the students who have been doing this without administrators even know it was occurring. They, the, the fact that they feel they now have um, a part of the process here at William Mary, that they're included in a community of like-minded individuals and that we're organizing it in a, a safe and welcoming and uh, diverse environment for them um, speaks volumes because esports and gaming is part of the culture of young adults right now. And I think it was a little deafening when they didn't have any opportunity to, um, to do anything from where they're living and, and taking courses. And now they feel like they're being represented and they're being hurt. So it's a great opportunity. Um, but did we get any answers on the eTARC? No, we didn't. No, it's, it's uh, the eSports Training and Research Center. And we hope to not only provide it as a place for students to game, but also for scholarly and research activities as well. Terry, do you wanna share about the homecoming challenge? Yes, uh, so unfortunately with the pandemic, we were not able to play our traditional homecoming game against the University of Delaware that's scheduled on the football field, but both schools decided that we wanted to do something and so, the two institutions got together and we played all of our games against one another during that week, one game per day. And it was a tremendous success. We got such a huge turnout, record-breaking turnout during that week. 
um, I think it may be a tradition now that's been born. <laughs> so I wanted to thank everyone. It, um, we are just really excited about the projects that we've been a part of. We're proud of our accomplishments and know that none of it would be possible without a lot of the people on this call. Um, we appreciate the, the backing of our administrators. You know, with new ideas, sometimes comes the occasional controversy. Um, it's scary sometimes doing things that produce a new paradigm. Um, but I believe that with great risk have come great rewards. And so I want to pose another question. Was anyone surprised by any of the things that we presented? So we asked initially, what is it that we thought uh, that you thought we did? Was there anything that sort of shocked or surprised anyone? Maybe people that thought all we did was Blackboard, maybe they didn't know something else that uh, we had a hand in. I think that uh, one of the, the nice things from my perspective about our, our job is that we're never doing the same thing from semester to semester to year to year. Uh, there's always something new and we had no way of knowing that we were going to be under pandemic and that we were going to have to shift and and do things very differently uh, this past year. But that's that's what we do. We are flexible and we try to be nimble and we try to meet the needs of our students and our faculty and staff. And so hopefully we do that. Uh, but that's one of the the nice things I think about our job is that we're always doing something new. And we have a few references on the screen. And Karen, um, if you're able to. Uh, I can't. Um, I'm not allowed to share a file here, unfortunately. OK, well, we hope to provide um, a PDF of some places where you can get more information about some of the things we've been part of. And we definitely would like to hear from you if you have any ideas on things that we can partner with you on. And uh, I haven't heard a lot of questions from anyone. I'm wondering if anyone has anything specific they want us to go into more detail on. Yes, thank you, Karen Terry. If there's any questions, please, you feel free to, to join in and chime in now. And just know that this, this video will be archived. So these QR codes and links will be available uh, even after this session for anyone who's interested. Uh, this questions? is Carlene. I was going to, oh, I'm sorry. Was someone asking a question? Go ahead, Carlene. Okay. I was just going to say thank you so much for this informative presentation. I put that in the chat as well, but I was just going to encourage people, um, things that you wouldn't even expect Karen and Terry to do. They are really good at helping you think out of the box. So there have been many, many times in the MBA space that we had to like, oh, we're going to do something kind of out the box and you have been really great partners at helping us think about how we can get it done and execute it. So um, that's a way that I think staff can partner with you as well. You know, how do you make something happen and think about it? So even if you all aren't the right people to execute it, you're really good at pointing us to the right people. So I think that I just wanted to mention that to everybody else. So not necessarily a question, but just to promote you guys in terms of academic innovation because I think you're great out of the box thinkers and it's been really helpful on the MBA side as we're trying to just keep it interesting uh, for our students and faculty. Thank you, Carlene. Thank you for uh, bringing that uh, to our attention. I uh, actually had uh, a member of our community mention it was about a month ago that they had an idea but they hadn't really thought it through yet and uh, when they had more uh, more of a finalized idea and maybe they talked to us and I told them, I said, you don't need to finalize your idea before you come and no. talk to us. <laughs> and they were like, oh, I can bring a half baked idea to you. And I'm like, yes, bring it on. We'll <laughs> bake it together. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate those comments, Carla, and I appreciate your program's willingness to to go outside the box and, and be, be flexible in, uh, in order to give the students that, that experience.
Well, I for one enjoy the privilege of working with you both. I know that when anytime we have a video project or whatnot, you two are instrumental to helping bring that to, to fruition in a professional and polished way, especially <clears throat> commencement. <clears throat> <laughs> you know how that goes. So thank you so much. I, I truly enjoy working with you. And, and for anyone who hasn't checked it out, as someone who does social media, the um, the making uh, the most out of social media with the farmland versus the pre, it, it's pretty, it's pretty Please, well please go and look at that. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And thank you, Elizabeth. It's a, there's a, so many things that your office does for us that's too numerous to even go into but we definitely could not do a lot of this without your help oh likewise it takes it takes a village guys for sure there, there's a a note in the chat that someone would like to learn more about esports so i'm going to put the link to the esports website into the chat that's one place you can go to learn more about it and if you have questions beyond that, please feel free to reach out to um, either one of us. We'll be happy to chat more with you. Yeah, just real quickly though, I just want to say as far as esports goes, so we have a we have a competitive varsity program and a, a number of gaming titles. That's our applied side. We have an academic side with some curriculum and courses that we've been offering both inside the business school and out, and that's still ongoing. And We've also worked with some student organizations for the casual gamers who may not want to compete against other schools, but just want to have fun. And um, yeah, definitely check this site out if you want more information. Uh, and, uh, and one other thing is uh, we decided that when we were developing the esports that we wanted to, to make it unique to William & Mary. And so there were a couple of uh, pillars towards that end. And so a few things that were really important to us was the student involvement and the community aspects of it. Um, so many things have grown based on their input and their direct participation in decision-making and getting the program off the ground. And um, also the topic of wellness. Um, so, uh, it's easy to get lost in some of this stuff to where students perhaps may not be eating correctly or sleeping right or um, ergonomic tips that we can uh, stress. So we have tried to put an emphasis on, on that and we've had some help from the Student Wellness Center towards that. Mm -hmm. 